Uh, I know him because he, he wrote a paper recently, I, I, I guess it was a, a, a review paper about uh, COVID modeling. He, I saw his paper. Uh, he like he tried if I understood properly. I didn't read all the paper, but if I, if I understood properly what he did, he tried to do a huge amount of a kind of review of the uh, several mathematical models about COVID, and uh, he did a more comment. Uh, but uh, he commented like this: uh, "It's nice, uh, nice lecture, but not get an idea how to formulate the mathematical model of COVID." So the idea was not, was not to be a lecture in the sense of teaching uh, COVID modeling specifically, but maybe if you want, you can maybe talk a little bit more about the, uh, the process that you design the model, the difficulty. Please keep in mind that you already have in this channel a very short lecture of Professor Gunn. I did uh, like five minutes, she explained more or less how, to, not necessarily in details, because I'm quite sure she published a paper on nature, so I believe that the, this model is quite complex, I, all the details and so on. Yeah. But maybe you can talk in briefly. Uh, yeah, I think how... I can explain. And um, you mean uh, Kalyan Das, right? This question that he... Um... Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I can explain why, well, why I didn't include that many mathematical details. There is no problem with that for me to explain in the mathematical details. Um, I think... Uh, it's actually one of the comments that I have received in the past year is because this topic is very interesting to all people and not all people can understand the details. So people actually want to understand the concepts and what you can do with the models and what you can predict with the models, but they don't necessarily know, you know, like uh, ordinary differential equations or partial differential equations and so on. So I actually changed the style of my talks quite a bit during the pandemic so that a lot of people can understand them. Um, but I can, uh, maybe I can show the slides uh, with the equations back. Yes, let me share again. Just a minute, I'll share again. Okay, now we are, you have your slides again. So please. Okay, so uh, let me, uh, that's good, but I need to open the, because I, I had it. Yeah, oh, okay, it's here. So um, this is a, a, a so-called uh, deterministic compartmental models. And in deterministic compartmental models, as I said, you need to define what are the different compartments that you have and compartments are defined, but what are the disease stages you have? So when you have a, a, a disease spreading in the population, you need to think what are the processes that take in place, and then you just uh, formulate them mathematically. And as I said, the process is that the people go through, you know, a sequence of states, typically. You are uh, susceptible in the beginning to the disease, and then you go into the latent class, and from the latent class, you go, you become infectious, and from the infectious stage, you go either to recovered or you go to the hospital. So the first, uh, yeah, the first step is define these different states that are important in your model. You can make this more detailed. For example, you could also include, you know, symptomatic or symptomatic infections, split these boxes into two and so on. So our model, this it's quite simple model. It was chosen in such a way that we can uniquely identify the parameters of the model because we don't take just parameters from the literature. What we do is that we estimate these parameters so that they fit the data that we have. And um, um, how do you model actually, uh, uh, well, what are the equations? So like, what are the equations that describe this model? I think I, I also um, try to explain this a little bit. So you need to describe how people progress between these different boxes. So you need to uh, write down the rate of change, for example, of the number of susceptible individuals with time. Uh, um, and the number of susceptible individuals with time, it only, it only decreases due to infection because the people only go you know, from susceptible to uh, uh, exposed state. And uh, you write down the infection term and the infection term is just, well, how the uh, susceptibles would decrease. This is the number of susceptible people that you have at time t times the rate with which they are uh, decreasing. And the rate is, um, well, it's something that is called the force of infection. Um, so that's this term. Then when you go, when you go in the exposed states from, from this state, 
while the septic was decreased, the exposed uh, number of exposed people it increases with time. So you have exactly the same term. So you 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 uh, exposed increase, and then the exposed people leave the compartment only in one way. Um, they go into the infectious state, and um, because we assume. Um, we assume that our rates are, for example, um, well, if you would assume that the, the rates are exponentially distributed, you have only uh, one, um, sorry, you, you go with the rate alpha. So this is the latent period. Then you transit in the first compartment and so on. So it, it's actually, um, I think that the formulation is, is not quite difficult if you know the if you know the differential equations and if you, if you can think about how to write the rate of change for the number of people in a, in a given compartment, it's quite a standard procedure. But I think if you, if you don't know this formulation, that's also probably quite hard to, you know, to grasp it too quickly. So I didn't spend so much time on this. And the choice of the model, as I said, that it's governed by that, what are the data that we have that we want to fit and uh, which parameters we can uniquely identify in the model. So, for example, one of the questions that I ask sometimes, so why don't we split these people who are infectious into those who are symptomatic or asymptomatic? Well, we don't split them because we don't have any information, like, uh, you know, we don't have any data about how many infectious uh, individuals are, for example, what is the proportion exactly of infectious individuals that is asymptomatic and so on. Because the only data is what was the total proportion of people seroprevalence, so how, what's the proportion of people that have been infected by a given time point, and uh, how many people in each of these age groups got to the hospital. So it's um, um, not sure how detailed it is, if you have uh, more questions. Did you like the content of this channel? So please subscribe to the channel. It's quite simple, you just have to hit subscribe and you, have, you can decide which level of the notification you want. You may choose all the notifications, which means that everything that I do, you receive a notification on your, on your bell here, on the upper corner, or you can choose no notification. I would strongly recommend you to subscribe, even if you don't want to receive all the notifications. Just hit here, no notification, or hit the one that you like the most. It's pretty important that you subscribe to the channel so I, ha I can achieve a high number, of, a high number of subscribers, and people can as well understand that this channel has a nice content to offer, and YouTube will understand as well that it can make a nice divulgation of the channel. So please subscribe to the channel.